Hello friends, this video on hydrocarbons part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about allylic substitution reaction of alkene. We have talked about allylic addition where we have added two bromine molecules, right? But this is allylic substitution and this is pretty rare. It occurs only when you heat at very, very high temperature, maybe 800 Kelvin, 800 Kelvin or something, high temperature. So in this case, at this temperature, my hydrogen is substituted by halogen, which is X. If you have low temperature and is a liquid phase, then we go for addition react, right? So in low temperature and liquid phase, so in this case, we have generally addition reaction as we have discussed, right? This is only at high temperature at and the gas phase. So why, why it is so? Because at high temperature, in fact, if, if you don't have, if you don't have polar solvent, right, which we don't have at high temperature, right? So formation of intermediate for this reaction is unfavorable. And thus, if you see, CH2, this, if you, if you take propene and you add bromine, it's very high temperature, then in that case you will see that this bromine will replace this hydrogen. It's all. So you will get and you will get one HBr because you are running Br2 gas. So you will get uh, 3, this is 3 bromo prop one e right? This is allyl bromine actually, what you get. But if you can't maintain this high temperature and you still want substitution reaction at uh, low temperature, you want subst reaction at low temperature, then you can use NBS, N bromo suikinamide. At 350 Kelvin also, you can achieve the substitution reaction. So in that case, we have free radical reaction. Let's see this NBS. So NBS is something like this. CH2, CO, and Br. And we use this in a CCL4 solution because CCL4 is inert. And this, in this case, this NBR bond is very, very weak. It's very, very weak bond. 50 kilocal per mole. This is the energy required to break this bond, right? And it easily forms Br free radical. Easily form Br free radical. Now, since we have Br free radical easily, right, in the sunlight, so what happens is CH2 double bond, I have CH, CH3, if I use NBS in presence of sunlight, it will give this guy. Right? The bromine will replace this hydrogen. And plus, we will get a succamide here, where this is only what CH2, CH2, CO, CO, and NH. Correct? Because it is free radical reaction. We can also use SOCL2 in case of NBS. There also you will get the same product. You want to see the reaction, this is the reaction. CH2 double bond, CH, CH3, and you have SO2, CL2, and we need some 500 Kelvin almost, some light and some peroxide. So it will give CH2 double bond. CH, CH2, CL, and SO2, and SCO. This is what you get. Let's talk about oxidation of alkenes. Alkenes, when it reacts with Bayer's reagent, Bayer's is nothing but the aqueous solution of KMnO4, and this produces glycols. If you see, these are the glycols, right? This is vicinal glycols. And decolization of KMnO4 is also used for test of unsaturation because if it is unsaturated, use KMnO4, the KMnO4 will be consumed and the whole solution will be desaturated. So going uh, coming again to the Bay S region, what is this? This is nothing but alkaline KMnO4, it is named after a um, German chemist Adolf von Bayer's 
And this is used to test unsaturation. It's a powerful oxidant. And it is syn addition reaction. This is a syn addition reaction. Let's see the re reaction mechanism here. So I have this compound, I have double bond. Correct. And I have MnO4 minus. So MnO4 minus will look something like this. Mn. This is how MnO4 minus looks like. Correct. So now I'll draw MnO4 minus here. Correct. So what will happen is, in the presence of this alkyne, what will happen is, so this guy will attack this, this electron will move in this direction, this will move in this direction, and they will form a bond actually. So with this, what you get is something like this, and here you have, sorry, here you have oxygen, here you have oxygen, here I have Mn, O minus, we have double bond O. This is what you get. Correct. Now, what happens is the moment you add, now this also O minus, right, will form bond like this, and it will form bond like this, and this bond will break actually. This bond will break. Correct. So, with this, what you get is something like this. So O here, then you have Mn here, right? And then you have a double bond here, and I have a double bond here. Correct? This bond breaks, so here I have O minus. Correct? On this, I'll get H plus from the solution, or I have water here. Water I'm just assuming gives H plus and OH minus. I can I have to add actually H2O and then remove uh, uh, the ion. So let me just add H plus ion here. So this becomes OH charge. Correct. And this guy I have here, I have water, right? H plus and OH. So OH minus now will react with this guy. So it reacts with this guy, this bond breaks. So let's write the output here. I'm just assuming that let's put a star here. Star here. Okay, we're starting from this position now. So we'll get something like this. CC. This is double one. This is gone. This is OH here now. Right? One OH I have here achieved. And this one, if you see, I have this bond broke, so I have O minus here, right? So this is this is Mn, this is O minus, this is double bond still, correct? And here I have OH added here, correct? This is OH added and this is O minus here. Now this guy will on its own go in this direction and this bond will break out. Sorry, there was an O already here, so there was an O here actually. Okay. This bond will break, Mn and O bond will break. So with this what you get is C O minus C OH. And these two are already attached. Correct? And this is the output you'll get. This this extra you'll get that is that extra thing is nothing but M and O O and H. Now on this again my H will attack, H will attack and it will form OH. And this is what you get as output. Correct, this is O minus. On this H will attack and you get OH. This is what you will get as an output. H at least will come from here like this. Correct, because this H will break again, it will again form MnO4 minus 3. And that we can make it to MnO2. This is the reaction, the syn addition actually. So what this is a little complex. I had MnO4 minus. I've added in this fashion. I got this. And then I've added H here. I got OH here. 
Now I add OH minus here. So this forms and this is a complex one, it breaks on its own, I get O minus. In that I add H plus 2, I get 2 OH here. Right. This is my reaction. So this is my vicinal glycol. This is my vicinal glycol. Let's talk about oxidation of alkenes now. So the acidic potassium permanganate or the acidic potassium dichromate will oxidize alkenes to either ketones or acids, depending on the nature of alkenes and the experimental condition. We won't study the reaction mechanism for this, but if you see this guy will sometimes form ketone and sometimes form acid, sometimes form acids, depending on the condition. This is called oxidation, correct? You make ketones or acids out of alkenes. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.